So in today's video, I thought that I would share how I personally forecast in the Forex market. And when I say forecast, I basically mean that I'm looking for possible chart setups that may happen in the near future. And my goal in this is to see what can potentially happen in order to increase my edge of having a winning trade. So that being said, let's get right into the video. Hey guys, Candace B here. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. Welcome back to my subscribers and welcome to my new ones. Go ahead and click that subscribe button if you are either a new trader or you are already trading Forex and you just simply love watching chart analysis videos. Now as a disclaimer, because you all know I have to say this, this is how I personally forecast and how I've developed my way of forecasting. So there's no one way to forecast in the Forex market. Of course, everyone's going to have their own way if they do decide to forecast. So I'm just showing you how I usually prepare my charts and how I wait for my setups and what goes through my mind while I wait. Okay, so as you can see, um, I'm going to be looking at GBP JPY, uh, which is the British pound versus the Japanese yen. Now, as some or most of you may already know, Brexit is happening right now in the UK. So, you know, GBP pairs, they at times can move a little bit crazy. <laughs> I actually personally have been watching GBP pairs kind of from the sideline lately. Even though I love GJ, I just feel like it's kind of smarter just to watch from the sidelines. But I thought it'd be fun to look at GJ today and see how forecasting would work. So if you watched my how to analyze Forex charts video, which I highly recommend that you watch, <laughs> you will know that I use top-down analysis. Matter of fact, I'll definitely leave a link in the description box for that video, just so you can check it out. Um, but yeah, so I use top-down analysis. Um, I find that is the most efficient and quickest way to kind of break down price action. So we are starting on the monthly, and my main goal on the monthly is to really just figure out what direction price is going overall. What is the bias? So right away, as you can see, I just drew a very straight, very clean cut trend line because I see one tap here and another tap here. So price is clearly making these lower highs, but um, as you can see as well, something's happening around this area. So even though price, you know, has had the momentum to push down in the past years, it has not been able to break this area literally for years. So that is very important to remember that this area here that has been attempted once, twice, three times, four times is very, very strong. It's a very strong support that is very hard to break. So as we go down to the lower time frames, we will see how that kind of plays out. So right now, as I'm just kind of looking at the price overall, uh, it looks like price does have the potential to come back up to this trend line and possibly push down. Uh, which would be making kind of another lower high. Um, so definitely we have to go down to the lower time frames to see what might be happening because that can of course take a long time. You do have to keep in mind that when you are on the higher time frames, even if you see structure, it takes longer to form. So we're going to go down to the weekly and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to map out kind of that, that area that we were just talking about where that very strong support is because I just kind of want to get a visual and I want you guys to see it too. How clean um, price has rejected off this area um, and has exhausted and as I zoom in I do see that there is still kind of this downward um, momentum that has been happening but I can also see that in the past few weeks GJ has just been literally moving sideways there's a time where you see that price pushed down to this area it rejected it came back down again, tried it again, and rejected again, and now it's kind of been correcting itself, pushing up, correcting itself. So right now, it's kind of in this corrective phase where it's kind of just collecting orders and figuring out what to do with the orders. So that's pretty much all I want to see on the weekly right now. Um, and we're going to go down to the daily. So now this is a time frame that I'm going to actually be looking for what I feel um, might be good trading opportunities. So as I said on the weekly, you see this double bottom being formed. So price came down, rejected, came down, rejected, and now it's kind of moving up. So as you can also see, and I guess this comes with chart time as well, is you can see that every time price has kind of moved in this consolidated area, um, it's kind of been moving a bit further up. So if you can see, it kind of came down here. I'm going to just zoom in. It kind of came down here, 
rallied up a little bit, came back down, but it never kind of came back as low as it was before. So it's kind of slowly creeping higher and higher. And as you can see on November 27th, there was that huge push up. Price knew exactly when, what it wanted to do. There was no question about it. And it closed without a wick at all. So it closed very confident. So right now we're still just kind of waiting at this point for price to do something. I wouldn't be trading at all uh, this pair right now because I want to just wait for price to break out of this consolidation, which it looks like it is attempting to do. Because as you can see, if I were to even use this horizontal line, um, you can see that every time price has kind of come up to this area, it has not been able to break it, and in addition to that, it's closed below it. Once, twice, three times, four times, but as you see on the fifth time, it actually broke out and it closed above this area. So that is definitely an indication that price might be having a desire to push further up. And what we also want to see, and I'm going to go down to the 4 hour in a bit just to kind of show a bit further, but you see that once price broke up and closed above this area, it also retested it. So that is kind of just a really textbook uh, setup where, you know, price breaks an area, retests, and then it looks for a further push up. So, you know, ideally everybody wants that kind of clear cut trade where it's kind of like boom 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 but we all know that that's not how <laughs> forex works unfortunately or else we'd all be millionaires <laughs> um so let me go down to the four hour and we will see what further detail we have yeah so same idea what the daily showed broke out super clear cut candle no wicks nothing just very just straight body and then price had attempted to kind of keep pushing further up this area kind of exhausted and it pushed down but price ended up being very indecisive because it closed as as a doji it closed close to where it opened so right now it's kind of collecting orders like i said and this could actually with momentum could definitely push up especially during london session or new york session because gj those are the best time to trade it i would say usually gj i would trade around 3 a.m 4 a.m eastern time and it could even have a push during that new york london crossover around 7 8 a.m so what i'm looking for right now in terms of what i would want the trade to do it's already kind of retested i would personally be waiting for a break up here I would be comfortable looking to take buys once price breaks up and closes above here. And the reason why is because I want to have that confirmation that price is no longer interested in staying in this consolidation zone and that it's now ready with momentum to continue pushing up. And of course, ideally to push up to this to this trend line that we drew on the higher time frame. So I would definitely just be looking for a close above around this area. And then what I'd be doing is once I'm of course entering my trade, I'm going to be looking for where my stop loss would be. So let's say for example, we enter around 141.912. I like to keep about a 20 pip stop loss usually so I feel like yeah around this area is pretty perfect around seven well it's kind of like six <laughs> so <laughs> around like 700 this area and I'm just gonna turn this red just to kind of show this is a stop loss so if my stop loss is 20 pips below where I entered then one to three risk reward I would want to take profit for 60 pips and again this is kind of a big kind of scale um, you know shooting for 10 to 20 pips in terms of take profit is usually ideal but I'm just for context I'm just kind of showing how I would ration it out. So it would be around 500 area where I would want to take profit. So yeah, so if I'm entering here, this is my stop loss, this is my take profit. Um, and price could do many things before it kind of gets here. But once it kind of breaks up, the goal is for it to continue up. And there is a high chance that if there is enough momentum that price can continue up, that might take, you know, a week, two weeks. But at that point, we don't really care because we just want to manage our risk. And it doesn't really matter what happens after our take profit is hit. Let's say, for example, price starts to go into profit. As it continues to go into profit, I am moving my stop loss as I go along. So in this case, even if, let's say, you may want to scale out, you see that, you know, price is really in momentum, you want to scale out. The best thing to do with a, would of course be to put your stop loss in profits as soon as you can and then you just kind of keep moving it up as price continues up. Let's say it continues up and it hits your stop loss here, well then at least you know you've gathered whatever amount of pips that is, which is like 
a hundred standard tips, which is crazy. But yeah, so scaling out is an option in these type of trades, but you want to just wait. This is just a waiting game. Just going to clear this out. As we were saying, price may not move the way we want it to move. So we want to figure out what might happen if, let's say, price doesn't do what it, it initially that we want it to do. So of course, like I said, we want it to break above here. We would enter around here and then keep riding it up. However, what can happen is, you know, very well that price can kind of push up and then have a fake out, kind of make a double cup here and have a fake out and push back down to this area. And of course, in the meantime, it's kind of just doing, it's moving the way, whatever, how price moves, of course, to get back down to this zone. So that can be something to look out for as well, is the fact that, you know, you might see a fake out. So in that case, let's say, for example, I see price pushing up here, but then it's having a bit of trouble breaking past. I might just want to wait for price to kind of push back down uh, either to here, where, as you can see, there was rejection because before you can see that price kind of uses as a resistance, but since it's already broken above and kind of pushed down, if it makes this double top and it pushes back down to this area, it could just be testing this area as a support now for a further push up. So that can be one way to look for one way to look for another trade if our initial one where you know we're waiting for a close above if that does not come to fruition. Another potential trade opportunity I can look for is I can simply just wait for price to come back down here. Let's say that it uh, it fails to break above this area and you see it pushing down. If I want to be patient, I can wait here. This is where I would definitely want to take a buy because of, again, how strong the support was in the terms of the consolidation because every time it's kind of come down here, it's rejected. So I would be confident taking a buy possibly around here, maybe the 231, around that 200, setting my, you know, my stop loss, for 20 pips under and then setting my take profit for a good 60 pips so that's a one in three risk reward of course if you're kind of you know using bigger stop losses the main thing to remember to do is to lower your lot sizes you know manage your risk and just because a lot of times even though your analysis may be right price just might need some time to really play out. So just really change your lot size accordingly. Don't use a higher lot size just because of, you know, you being overconfident. It's better just to lower your lot size, have a bigger stop loss to kind of have that space for the trade to play out. And then if it plays out, then that's great. And if not, then at least your risk is managed. So on the other side, of course, because my bias is buys, uh, I wouldn't really be looking for sells. But just for context purposes, if we were to be looking for sells, I wouldn't even be considering sells until price closes beneath this uh, consolidation area and I want it to be a clean close below just like how this was a clean close above I would want something like that below where price shows me that hey I don't want to go up now I'm exhausted I want to push down and another thing I can you can actually kind of look at for reference is if you look left you see this kind of area this area of wicks to be filled so you can even use that so let's say you know, you want to enter around here. Your stop loss would be somewhere up here. Um, you can either do it above or just kind of on that area, depending on how tight you want it to be. And then your take profit could be where the wick is to be filled. So you can kind of use this wick fill as an area of where you would want to scale out and have your trade go. So that is probably what I'd be looking for, to be honest, with a sell, is if it were to close below here, nice and clean, my stop loss in this area here, and then I would set my take profit just to be filling this wick, and that, that would be it. I know that I didn't really go on the one hour, but one hour would definitely be more so for entry. To be honest, I've been entering more so on the four hour. Um, I feel more comfortable doing that for whatever reason, um, so I don't really go down lower than the four hour, unless I really, really, really want to know, you know, specifics. So sometimes I'll take a peek at the one hour, even the 30 minute, but for the most part, four hour, I feel pretty comfortable trading, um, entering trades with that, uh, with that time frame, and it's part of my trading plan. So that is why I'm kind of sticking to it. So that's pretty much how I forecast. Very, very basic kind of way. Of course, there's more detail that I can go into, but of course, for video purposes, I'm not going to kind of extend it. I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of how I forecast, what I look for, different potential trades. As you can see, my bias was to take buys. So that's why I kind of went through a few buy options. 
um, and then I just kind of went through one sell option because if I were to be considering sells, it would take a bit of time for price to come back down here unless there was a huge news event. And again, GBP, Brexit, wouldn't be surprised if that happened, but it would take a bit of time for it to kind of push back down here. So of course, in that case, I'd be reevaluating. I'd be forecasting once again, kind of refreshing to see what the bias would be. But yeah, so that's how I forecast, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions at all, any you know, constructive criticism to give, definitely leave it in the comment section below. And let me know if you like this video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you want to see kind of more of these videos where I just break down charts, do different things on charts, analyze different pairs, whatever the case may be, just kind of based on my personal uh, method of analyzing. Let me know if you want to see more videos like that. And of course, feel free to connect with me. My social media will be in the description box below. And last but not least, subscribe, please and thank you. <laughs> I'd appreciate it so much uh, if you subscribe. And I appreciate so much the growth that I've had so far. And I really hope to continue to grow and provide quality content that is really helpful for you guys so that is my goal that is my mission and i will continue to fulfill my mission <laughs> so that being said thank you again so much for watching this video love you guys so much and i will see you in the next video bye